SGC here, we're back with movie review. Tom Yong Gong 2, or aka The Protector 2, known in Hollywood or the Western places. So it's directed by, I'm, I'm gonna try, but I'm gonna fail, but uh, Pratya Pankyo. Uh, he is a film director that also directed On Bak, and he directed the first Tom Gun. Tom Yun Gong. So, so we have a casting of Tony Ja as Kam, the main character. We have Sergeant Mark, played by Pitch Tai Monkumolai, who was accompanying him, uh, Tony Ja anyway, in On Bak. And then we have Maurice Crump as this crazy fighter. And we got Yanin Gigi, who plays this character. I swear I didn't hear her name in when I watched it, but she's known as Ping Pong. But just looking at the crap casting. I'm like, okay. And then we got Rafa Foam Gam as another fighter and Riza as Mr. CL. So that's pretty awesome stuff. So pretty much the basic plot line is somewhat similar to the first one. If you don't remember, the first one talked about, you know, abducted elephants and Tony Ja has to go and help them out and just rescue them to, you know, pay respects to his master sort of father figure. This time around, same thing happened. His I guess the elephant that he saved in the first one grew up and now they are attracting, you know, things again. And then abduction happens and then a lot of things happen. So not to ruin it because the story is actually pretty simple but as the get-go but a lot more things are going to add on and that's the awesome part about it. So what did I like about this film? First off, like I said, the story is simple from the get-go and as it builds up, the pacing's really done well. Sure, you would say I wanted some big action sequences in the front, but no, it's more of a norm where they just really, you know, Tony Jaa is just like, oh, I don't want it, I'm a peaceful guy, sort of thing, and then he, he's sort of pushed into this situation, and he's just like, no, I gotta protect everybody. So first off, you would want to know the comparison between Protector 1 and Protector 2. So I would say the biggest difference here that I loved about the two differences in the sequel is that in, in Protector 2 is that, or I'm gonna just refer to it as the American name Protector 2. So here we have a, bi a lot bigger cast, a lot more fighters in the sense where they're not just showing up to get beaten up by Tony Jaa, but rather they have a storyline, like centric reason to exist beyond just the initial fight. And that's the biggest awesome part about this is that there is a reason where the story sets up this whole organization that any henchman could be a threat in somewhat of a sense rather than where the previous films it felt like anyone that fights Tony Jaa in the setting that is just a lot of people like ganging up on him he would own all of them like that was no doubt about it here it's it's sometimes like it's sometimes like that but sometimes it's not sometimes there's a threat and you're like oh my, oh my goodness like what's gonna happen now I felt that in non back or protector that like anyone that was not one-on-one -on -one fight that was not a threat and so yeah, so we also get more introduction for Maurice Crump, who was just pretty awesome and badass in this film. He plays this number two dude, and he he himself is a martial artist, so that's awesome, the fact that he is fighting. Like, he knows how to fight, and he's just not acting. So that's always a plus. And then we have the awesome part of Ping Pong, I guess. I swear, I did not hear her name said throughout the entire film. But anyway, she is another fighter in the sense where she's on a revenge track that's sort of parallel to Tony Jaa's character, and she's just awesome. And I say that um, she got a lot more crazy shots and martial art tricks up her sleeve than Tony Jaa himself throughout the entire film. Like, there were some intense moments with Tony Jaa, but I felt a lot more, like, cool sequences were given to her. And she herself is a Taekwondo artist. I don't know if she's a black belt or whatever, but, but she specializes in Taekwondo and, and it was pretty, just pretty awesome to, to see. And also we got Riza himself playing Mr. LC. There's a just awesome vibe of him playing the big, you know, number one guy saying everything like, you gotta obey me. And he was just pretty badass and I really enjoyed his, his portrayal of Mr. LZ and it was enjoyable. And then uh, Sergeant Mark playing the guy that always follows around Tony Jaws in his films. He was pretty good. He got more lines here. And yeah, so we also got Rafa Pangam. She's like the eye candy in this film. She was all right, but you know, I don't really care because it's all about fighting here. Okay, so now we're going in an area where I'm not so clear about if I liked it or not. 
sure the pacing in the beginning was slow so they sort of i felt like they they, they tried to justify the slow pacing with this huge crazy set piece with bikers and everything like it's in the trailers and that sequence was just amazingly crazy but the believability of that entire sequence sort of felt through for me it was just like i can't imagine that we are fighting or that this it was just too much and i felt that while I was watching, it just felt like these producers or director wanted like, okay, since we, you know, the world has not seen Tony Jaa for the last three years, because On Back 3 came out back in 2010, and and now we, you know, he's coming out, so we gotta throw everybody into it, so it just seems that like everyone is like, whoa, look at this guy, he can still do the thing that he did back when he first started On Back, so that, that was feeling, but then it was alright, and... And there's also the whole willpower as to like fighting, and that's some of the believability here is that sometimes Maurice Crump's character is sort of like he's super confident, but there are times where it's like, where did that confidence go, sort of thing. So that was like a disconnect in terms of character development. But beyond that, the plot was simple. The fights, I I guess it was a it it's not as memorable in terms of like comparing it to Protector One. But I would say Protector 1 for me, I never reviewed it on this channel, but when I watched it, I felt that it was way too brutal, too intense, too, I guess, violent in terms of his character, because he was a peaceful guy, but the way that he dispatched people was just way too much, because he, because he, you know, there was a lot of, you know, breaking bones and everything, and it was just way too much, and I felt it was a lot better here in terms of, there was no over excess of just violence but rather other characters who were more justified in their violent approach that they got more of the violent moves. But not saying that Tony Jaa didn't get those violent, you know, elbow elbow here, headshots there, but it, it felt a lot more in character this time around, so I give them props for that. And yeah, I think as a sequel, the way that it, it, it went this way was a lot better in terms of just, oh, it's Tony Jaa fighting again, so let's put him front and center and have everything focused on him and not so much everything else. I think they, cause I think I think it's been set up that Tony Jaa can fight and the fact that now in, in The Protector 2 that they set up all these people that also can fight and they're actually good and cool stylistically fighting, and I think it's, it's like a good good foil for Tony Jaa. So it's not just like, look, Tony Jaa can fight, but the, also these guys can fight on par in terms of stylistics and the story itself i think it was not bad like simple but it got more complicating and i liked how it progressed so that's always a plus in terms of sequels because you can always just say oh the first one's always better but i would say for me the character development in this sense was better than the first one and it's interesting how they also refer to the first movie as he was in sydney and did everything and then they mentioned that so that was also also a good connection that oh yeah they recognized the first movie actually happened because sometimes sequels don't refer to it it was like the fact that it was such a big thing because he did some crazy damage in the protector so so that's pretty much it everything i enjoyed except for this one thing i swear like anybody that is like not caucasian spoke english well in terms of their background like they're Thai they have accents or like there's this Asian looking guy but he had no accent but his delivery was good but I felt that actual con actual Caucasians that were in this film I felt I felt that these guys don't weren't conveyed in the sense where I believe their roles their lines delivery was kind of like weak compared to everybody else so I wonder what happened there maybe it was just like oh we don't have the budget to hire better actors but it sort of felt Ooh, when I when I had those white dudes or Caucasian dudes or whatever on screen so that's the biggest gripe I have about this film and beyond that the fighting is spread out a lot farther apart there's more fighting sequences though they're not as intense for Tony Jaa I would say but yeah I totally loved it when Yanin as ping pong showed up and she fought like the way that she fights it was pretty good and I enjoy that. So, you could say that this movie is not as great in terms of Tony Jaa fighting, but as a whole package as a whole, I enjoyed it a lot more in terms of just, you know, Tony Jaa fighting. Because that's what everyone's going to go in looking forward to. Tony Jaa kicking ass, 
doing Muay Thai or whatever. But I think when at the end of the movie you realize there's a whole package of like more fighters are shown. I think if you realize that you would enjoy the movie as an overall package a lot better than going like, oh, this movie sucked. Tony Jaa didn't really do anything. And I think that's the point of the movie where he's not the central focus anymore, but rather spreading it throughout his fame and just bringing up other fighters. And it was just, yeah, I liked how they treated this sequel for sure. So this was shot in 3D and I did not watch it in 3D. There are sequences where it's clearly like in your face, but not that many. And the CG, I would say, seeing that it's a Thai, you know, studio, I, I don't really expect it much. Though there's some, you know, some th CG sequences where it's just like, that's just ugly. Like, you know, it's fake, like in your face. But, you know, it's it's forgivable because it's, it's a Thai company studio in my sense but if that bothers you just a heads up for the CG fanatics there are some ugly CGs in this film but anyway but anyway that's pretty much it for this movie review for Tom Jung Goon 2 or the Director 2 I can't wait for Tony Jaws return because if you didn't know he's actually coming back with on back for the beginning and it's gonna be filmed I don't know, filmed or released this year, and also he's actually in Fast and Furious 7. I wonder if his character is gonna stick, you know, despite the fact that we lost a, you know, a walker. Anyway, so I'm done with this movie review for Tom Jung Gung 2, Protector 2, and that's all. See ya.